control. Control. Let's look at the definition. Now, according to the standard IFRS 10, control can be explained in three three different you know situations or three different what uh, assumptions or conditions. We can explain control. The first one is that we say an entity obtain uh, obtain sorry let me use obtain control control when when one so we have three things so an entity obtain control of another entity when the first one is that when the entity is having power over the what another entity we can also say that a parent, we can change this place to be a parent. So when, so a parent obtain control when that parent obtain power or have power or has power over the other entity. So the second, the first thing is what power. So anytime a parent is having power over another entity, then we can say what there is a control. The second one has to do with the parent is exposed to or has the right. In the, uh, to the variable returns with the involvement with what? With the investee or the subsidiary. What did I say? I'm saying that a parent also obtain control when it is exposed, when it is exposed or have the right to the variable returns with the involvement in what? With the investee. So remember, we are saying that the parent is exposed or has the right has the right to the variable return. Remember that they are interested in the return of the subsidiary. So the variable return with their involvement it was with the subsidiary. The third one has to do with when the parent when the parent has obtained control or sorry has obtained the power or has obtained or have the ability okay the third one you're looking at when the parent I don't want to use the word power again so when the parent is having the ability over the investee to influence the investee's returns then we say control exists so anytime a parent is having the ability over the what the investee to what to affect or to effect or to influence the returns of the investee, then we say what there is control. Now look at this plenty plenty you know theory and then works. It makes it a bit complicated. So if you are having a, a full question and we are we are seeing so many things, how do you use these three you know assumptions or three you know conditions to determine control? It becomes a bit complicated. So the standard has devised a nice way of determining control using what numericals. So let's look at that. Still, we are with control. Okay. So the in several cases or in exam situations both professional and then maybe internal exams in your universities or any tertiary institution, the, this particular thing we are coming to look at is what you are going to see in your exams. So it, this is what is going to help you to determine your, your control. Okay. Now, here we are looking at, in several occasions, a control is obtained when the entity is having an interest, an equity interest in the other entity. And we know in varied occasions, an entity is acquiring or is having interest in the other company by what? Acquisition of what? Shares. Acquisition of shares. Or is having what? Voting rights in that particular what? Entity. So according to the standard, we are saying that an entity obtains control when that entity, when, when an entity acquires, acquires, 50% plus of the equity shares of another what, entity. Then we say what? There is a control. So 50% equity shares of another entity 
then we say what? There is a control. Very simple. So, for instance, we can say that, remember that this equity share is also known as the voting right. The voting right. So, when an entity is acquiring 50% or more of the equity shares or voting rights of another entity, then we see what? There is a control. So, let's look at a practical example. So, we, let's say we have A here and we have B here. A is the one acquiring B. So, it's acquiring 100% of the equity shares of B. Then we say that A becomes what? The parent and B becomes what? The subsidiary. Because A is acquiring all the equity shares of what? Of B. A is acquiring all the equity shares of what? B. Then we say that what? There is a control. But remember, it's not all the time that the parent is supposed to acquire all the equity shares, all the percentage of the equity shares to have control over the entity. We can always say if A acquires B, and it's acquiring only 60% equity shares. So let me use the equity shares of B. Then we say that what? there is a control. Remember, the rule is that 50% or plus, 50% or odd or plus of what? Of B. Then we say what? There is a control. Then how do we classify the remaining 40% to make it 100%? So the remaining 40% will be acquired by other entities, don't forget. They will be acquired by other entities or they will be acquired by other what, investors. Those group of investors, according to the standard, we call them non-controlling interest. Non-controlling in interest, so NCI. So the equity shares or the portion of the equity shares that is not directly or indirectly attributable to the parent is what we call the NCI. So, you can ask what is an SDI, so equity portion or equity shares that is not directly or indirectly attributable to the parent is what we call the NCI. So if the parent is buying 60%, then the remaining 40%, which will add up to make the 100%, is classified or given to other investors or bought by other investors or other group of what investors. Then we can say these groups we call them what NCI. Very simple. Now. A control can be obtained either directly or indirectly. In these two examples, control has been obtained directly. What are some of the situations that will give rise to an indirect control? Let's say that we have three companies. We have A, Company B, and Company C, and Company Company B and Company C. So A acquires Company B, and then B also acquires Company C. Let's say A acquires 60% shares of company B and B is acquiring 70% shares of company C. Now, A is, the, uh, A is having direct control over B and A is also having indirect control over C. So A is having direct control over B but it's having indirect control about, over C because A is the one controlling B and B is going ahead to, for, to also purchase C or acquire C. In this case, we are saying that A is having indirect control over C. So in this case, we call this one a subsidiary, and we call the C a sub-subsidiary. In a consolidated financial statement situation, we would have accounted for the C as what well, our sub-subsidiary. We would have prepared a consolidated uh, statement for all of them. Is that okay? We will take a practical example and you see how it goes. Okay, so this is what A is having indirect control over C and direct control over what B. So control can be obtained through direct and indirect means. Now the question comes, does it mean that an entity is supposed to acquire 50% or more of the equity shares to always obtain control? It's a question. Does it mean that an entity is supposed to acquire 50% or more of the equity shares to always obtain control? The answer is no. There are some three situations that an entity can acquire below the equity shares, below half of the equity shares, yet a control will exist. What are these three conditions? Let's look at them, or those three conditions.
So conditions where an entity is going to acquire less than the 50% equity shares, yet there will be what? A control. That's what we are going to look at. So the first one, let's assume that we are still using entity A and entity B. The first condition. So A is acquiring 45% equity shares. We know that under normal circumstances, there is no control because the general rule is that the entity is supposed to acquire 50% plus of the equity shares of the other entity to obtain what? Control. So in this case, there is no control. But if A is acquiring 45%, that means the non-controlling in interest, they will be holding 55%. But this, let's say that we have 55 members having not more than 1% each. So the other investors that are acquiring the equity shares of B, they are all having 1%. 1%, 1% up to what, 55. So you see that it is insignificant. So anytime an entity is acquiring less than 50%, but the other investors or other investors in the company are having insignificant interest in that business, then we say what? Control exists. A will still be regarded as what the parent, and this one, the non control interest will be regarded as what the, the uh, sorry, the non, the B will be regarded as what a subsidiary. Please remember, this place we are saying that the investors are unrelated and yet they are having insignificant interest after A has bought or purchased 45 percent. Then there is what a control that's the first condition in the statement form. We can say that when the entity is acquiring less than the what. 50%, but yet the other investors are having insignificant holdings in the business. Then we say A will still account for what? the business in the form of it being controlled by A. The next condition has to do with joint arrangement. Remember, this is not IFRS 11 with joint arrangement, but there is some agreement. So let's say that A is acquiring B. They say 45%. And then C. We have C and then we have B. Also acquiring in B. We have C and then B also acquiring in B. C is acquiring 20%. So, so we, and then B is acquiring 30%. So if you add this, you are going to get, sorry, 35. This will go to 35. So if you add this, you get a 65, you add this, you're going to get 100%. Now, A is acquiring 55, sorry, 45%. C is saying that me, I don't have time. I don't have time to go for meetings and vote. So uh, let, let's come, let's have arrangement, let's agree. I'm giving you the 20%. So now A will be having indirectly 65%, which is more than the general rule, okay? So anytime there is an arrangement between a two companies that give rise to what more than a 50% equity shares, then there will be what control. So these are two, the data three. So these are two instances where control what control exists. So there are two instances rather, not three, sorry. So there are two instances. So these are two instances where control what will exist, even though the entity will be what acquiring less than what the 50% equity shares. Very, very important. So, the first one is that when the entity is acquiring less than the 50% equity shares, but yet the other holdings or the other investors are having insignificant what holdings. And then the third, the second one has to do with when there's an arrangement between what the two entities giving rise to what control or which give rise to more than the 50% equity shares. That is our what control. Remember, an entity whose total asset is by investing in another entity, that particular entity is referred to as what? A holding entity. A holding entity. So in our next lesson, we will look at how to determine a control. So this, how to determine a control, but we will look at a practical example and how you go about it. So this is about completed financial statement. This is just an introduction for you to get the concept. So we explain the key terms and we look at what, what control is. Because control is very, very important. Anytime you are given a question, the first thing you'll be asked to do is to what? Determine the control structure. So it's very, very important to understand this concept. Sometimes it comes in theory form to explain. 
what control is or to explain under conditions where control exists so this is very very important all right so please in our next video we are, next video we are going to look at the continuation of this particular topic please don't forget to subscribe